a week for the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program, which is uh, mandated in the region to, to deal with the uh, environment, and, uh, but also on climate change issues. So I will present from that particular perspective. Um, just on, on the outline, I think um, for us, we, we view uh, food security very much from an integrated perspective, and uh, that is how we are actually trying to, to address uh, climate change and food security uh, at present. Um, in the region, we already have um, uh, various um, plans and frameworks that are already in place. Um, and in these various frameworks and plans, there are priorities that have already been identified by our countries and territories that are already there um, uh, for, 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 for the countries to, to focus on for the next uh, 10, 20, 15 years. For this current um, uh, framework, we are, it's up to 2015 on the framework on climate change and also on the frameworks of DRR and uh, disaster risk reduction. Um, as I speak the, the, this week, the heads of agriculture and forestry are meeting in, in Fiji to deliberate on this particular issue as well on, on food security uh, and, and climate change. So in the region, we deal with this, these issues on a, regional, uh, uh, on a regional basis, particularly because of the region's smallness, um, uh, the vulnerabilities that we face, um, and, and also the, the geography that we are in. Uh, it's very much a lot of the work that we do is very regional based. Um, I guess um, the point has been made and will continue to be made. I think uh, the point that I would like to make for this one here is that we are very fortunate with the assistance of the Australian government that we now have a Pacific Climate Change Science Program that was launched in Durban. So in this particular program, we have what we term climate futures for all the Pacific Island countries. We haven't had this for, 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 for many years, and I think this is very much needed, the information, if we have to progress on our adaptation. Um, so that's, that's basically what is actually happening now. And, and from, from uh, the, the, the way that we are trying to address climate change, food security, and so on from our region, we are looking at it from trying to strengthen the institutions and improving coordination on climate change, food security, and other issues out there. Um, so that countries are better um, uh, strengthened uh, to, 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 to improve on their efforts to better respond to the needs of the, of the people as well as uh, deal with some of the issues. And, and a very recent um, development in the region right now is the, the, the development of our joint action plans. And the joint action plans on climate change disaster risk reductions and risk management and focusing on various issues um, which include food security and, and climate change. So those are some of the, the very recent developments that we are trying to, to work on. In 2015, in fact, we are actually bringing and trying to collapse a lot of these regional frameworks into one main um, framework for the region that deals with all the sectoral issues that are being impacted upon by climate change. Now, for us, in terms of um, climate uh, uh, smart agriculture programs, that are, you know, it has to be tailored to the country needs on food on, on, of our countries. Um, what we've seen over the years is that it's not enough to change just the practices. Um, we have to change the farming system as well in the long term. Um, particularly right now in, in a lot of our smaller countries like Palau, um, in, in, in some of our atoll countries of Tuvalu, uh, Kiribati, and so on, saltwater inundation is becoming a very critical issue for us because it impacts on our low-lying areas which are very good and very arable for agricultural purposes. So for now, we are trying to do as much as we could to, drool, to test tolerant varieties, to do other practices like bunding. We had dikes, the use of traditional materials and also engineering design dikes, and also drainage and irrigation systems that we are trying to do. Um, we, that's, those are the, the things that we are trying to do now, but we know that in the long term, we'll have to change the farming system, that we have to move. With. So we may have to abandon our low-lying areas to move into the into the, to the, uh, 
to the higher, uh, higher lines. Just another point on, on that particular picture. There, there, there's a lady there, on, on, that is PNG, Papua New Guinea. One of the challenges that this whole central province, which is home to about nearly two, three million people, it is very much drought related. And one of the challenges that the, the communities are telling us is the unpredictability of the weather. And that is impacting upon their decision whether to farm on the lower land or to farm on the upper lands. That decision alone becomes very critical and problematic right now because of the, the changes in weather. There's no clear demarcation between the dry and the cold as well as the wet and the hot. So that is because usually in, in, in the Pacific, a lot of our, or in most uh, 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 places, the, the agriculture is actually uh, based on the weather and the systems that are around that. And I think one, one of the other areas that we are focusing a lot right now in the Pacific region is ecosystem-based adaptation. And one of the, the, the basic principle in that is that a healthy ecosystem will bounce back quickly when we, it's hit by climate change exposures. So these are some of the things that we are bringing into our, into our practices and approaches that we are trying to promote into the region to try and deal with, um, with climate change and, and, and food security and other issues that are related to it. And also in the case of, uh, of, of, of our region, as I've said, we are always trying to look at the integratedness of the, of the work that we try and do because, because of the smallness of our physical islands and so on, water becomes vital. When there is a drought, it impacts on everything. Um, it's not only just an excess of water, but it impacts on our, on our crops, our flora, our fauna, and so on. Um, so basically, we are working with these islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, Marshall Islands, Tokelau, Nauru, and Niue. These are small islands to look at how we can try and improve on the water system so that if there is drought, there is no rain for months and so on, how can we um, address water or try and, and uh, bring in adaptation options to, to, to water to be able to address our, our food security issues. The, another, uh, another interesting work that we are trying to do in the region, this is from a GEF program that we are funding, uh, funding from the GEF as well as the Australian government, is the climate proofing of our infrastructures. Because what we see is that majority of our rural population subsist in the, in the margins of commercial, semi-commercial developments. And, you know, poor roading conditions doesn't allow them to contribute to broader development goals that can have positive effects. So in the case of, of um, Epi Island in, in Vanuatu, we are, we are trying to improve on their climate, their roading infrastructures so that they can be able to access the markets, they can be able to, to, to contribute to, to cash cropping and also get some livelihood and some uh, cash from, from that. Because it's all interrelated because from there then it access to health, resources, education, and so on. Um, so this is how we are also trying to, 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 to work around adaptation in the region to look at how we infrastructures can contribute to, to our overall development programs in the region. And also in, 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 in this is a work that has been going on for some years now. Um, and this is based with one of our sister organizations in, in, based in Fiji at the Secretariat of the Pacific Community. We have what we call climate ready collections um, where a lot of our planting materials, taro, uh, cassava and so on, uh, plantain and other materials are actually um, uh, conserved in this particular. So it's tissue cultured and actually conserved as what we call climate ready collections. So if there is um, Places like, for example, the terra blight that hit Samoa. Um, so now Samoa is slowly coming back. With those varieties that we have conserved, we are now helping Samoa to be able to, to pick up on, 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 on one of the, the very serious terra blight that hit the country, that destroyed the whole terror um, economy for Samoa for many, many years. So that's, that's something that we are, we are also working on in the region. Now, I think this is my last slide. I think for, for, for us, there are some things that we are already doing, but there's, there's something that we 
have not done very well. And I think I have to admit to that, that there is a need to better track this reduction or removal of uh, greenhouse gases in the Pacific region. We do not have the, uh, the, um, the, the facility right now or the know-how or the technology to be able to do that. Although with SPREP we have worked on uh, mitigation issues that are dealing with uh, uh, mitigating uh, um, GHG emissions and so on. But I think for this particular one, I think there is some need for work, further work in the region to be able to be carried out for us to look at that. Even though it's sometimes where we can use our second national communications to be able to try and do that, but I feel we haven't done this quite well in the region. Um, whether we should focus on that, that is something that the region will have to, to, to make that decision. Thank you.